So, you want to get started in assembly. Well, here's how you do it. First, you go to uh, create a project, choose standalone project. Now, device, you just say pick 18F45K22. In this case, that is the device I specifically am using, and I'm going to base this entire tutorial series around. Now you're going to say the hardware. We're not interested in using any specific hardware at this stage. We're just going to choose simulator. A compiler, you choose the MPASM, standing for MP Microstrip Assembly. All these others are in C. Now you just uh, browse for the specific folder that you're interested in. Then you say project name. You just call it assembly to tut. And then you just check this little box to make sure it doesn't create another little subfolder inside your dedicated project folder. So I just overriding this project. And then we're good to go. Congratulations, you just created your first assembly project. So now you go to source files. Inside the source file folder, that's everything we're interested in at this stage. We're just going to say new file, assembly file. The assembly file itself is the place where we're obviously going to code all our uh, interesting programs and stuff. So we're just going to name this assembly tut, tut. And then we're already in a correct folder, so we just click finish. Okay, so now we're at the start, your very first assembly program. So first things first, what you do is you define a little title for it. Literally just saying title and in quotes, whatever you want the title to be. And then you do the list uh, directive. The list directive is effectively telling the uh, compiler which pick it should compile this entire thing for. It's give, just giving it a little extra information. And the include directive is just uh, p18f45k22.inc. So th this, is, this is a little... Um, so for example, if you want to write a specific register that has a name, a special called a special function register. Let's say you want to write to add con one. Now it doesn't it doesn't know what add con one is without this at all. It's a, unless you specifically define it and tell it which memory location is that and that has named um, add con one and all that. And you don't want to do that every time. So this effectively saves you all the trouble it th th this way the compiler effectively goes with it and acts like it ex knows exactly where all the memory locations is so it really simplifies the process extremely okay next thing is the org directive now the org directive it stands for origin now the origin so it tells you the origin of the next few um, lines of code so if, for example let's say i want to go to init just another command I used. But uh, it, it's going to save whatever uh, program instructions I write after it, starting at in zero. So from zero on, it's going to store all these in program memory. So if, you, if for some reason it's very significant that you need to store, for example, that command at hex 1000, then you can do so. This command will definitely be stored by hex 1000 using this. But there's a special reason we're using 00, zero because this 00, zero is called the reset vector. The reset vector is effectively where the program memory starts. The first instruction it start it encounters when the pick boots up is going to be at 00, zero. and this is why it's called the reset vector. When your program resets, it starts executing this instruction and then that instruction and then another instruction. So that is pretty significant to get out of the way first. Then after this, it's org8. Now, org8 is also a very special um, location in the memory because it is effectively the interrupt vector. So whenever something big happens that you want the program to just stop in its tracks and just start executing some interrupt service routine or whatever significant event happens, it needs to service the interrupt effectively. Then it jumps here. It goes here immediately, and then it just starts executing whatever there is to execute from that point on. And that is what the interrupt 
little vector is for. It's just a very specific. So you can see I, I need to go to in it and go to ISR. So uh, after this, I'm going to let's let's just look at the co basic command structure of assembly at this stage. So let's say add little working, and we're just going to make it decimal five. So let's go. But the best way to consult this is just to go to the data sheet. So this is the data sheet, effectively, and it might look a little bit intimidating at first. But it's not that bad because you can just click this little thing here and it indexes the entire thing for you. The thing is very well written and it's written in a very logical way. For example, you want, let's say you want to find out something about the instruction set. You just look for, hmm, instruction set, instruction set summary. You click on it and here all the information you could ever hope and dream of of the instruction set is right here. So it gives you a little summary of what each little instruction the keep pick is capable of doing in a single step it gives you that instruction and a summary thereof and the syntax and all the nice things that you need to know so let's say we just used add little to working register so we use add little working k and it says okay the operand is k k is just a constant we give it it has to be between 0 and 255 because the pick itself only has 8-bit registers and the max value in an 8-bit register is obviously 255 and it gives a little description the opcode if you're really interested in it but uh, what we what we're really interested in is just this explanation of what it does and it gives a little example even and everything so we know from that that Whatever is in the working register is going to add five to it and just store that result in the working register. So the working register effectively is just a little piece of 8-bit memory that's immediately accessible to the CPU and everything. And everything is basically built around the working register. Just working within the working register is basically the... That, that, that's why they call it the working register because you're working, when you're working, you're using the working register the entire time. So it's a, most of these instructions are set, um, basically uh, set all, um, centered around the working register itself. So let's say you want, to, okay, let's say compare file skip greater than this little thing. So it compares a file with the working register and it skips if the file is larger than the working register. You see how it centers around the working register specifically. So you need to load a few things into working register and everything, but we'll get to that. That is just the basic outline of a little instructions in assembly. So, and the working register itself. So after this, you're going to put a label called init and then a label called ISR. ISR just stands for interrupt service routine. You can call it whatever you want. I just like the term ISR because it basically describes whatever you're doing. So a label is effectively like giving a name to a specific memory location. Like in, uh, in other programming languages, you have something called functions and subroutines and all these things, and they each have a memory. You're not saying, okay, call the function at 000110 memory location. No, you're just going to say, okay, call function in it. This is exactly that. You're just giving that memory location a name. Else you're going to have to load a 20-bit value every single time you want to go to this location. So when you say go to in it, you're literally telling the program to go to in it. It starts executing whatever is going on down here. So let's say we want to add five to the working register again. Then it starts it there and then all is well with the world. And so it goes to init. So the program starts, it goes here, it jumps to there. And that is it. You And at the very end, you just put a little end statement, obviously just to tell the entire program you're done with it. And it should compile at this stage. Yep, nice successful compile. So if I were to put a little breakpoint in there and run the debug, it should just go there. See, here is where the debug icon is. And then if you just skip one skip ahead, boom, it goes to init. And I think that about wraps it up for this video.